You go through many rural parts of the state, down in Chickasaw Nation. The tribe and the cities and the counties are working side by side. The common interest is what drives the issues, not abstract issues of sovereignty. It's the common goal and working together and respecting and recognizing that different voices count and different voices need to be heard. And that's what sovereignty is at the end of the day. Sovereignty is about a voice. It's about tribal people being able to speak for themselves, make their own decisions for the future. And they never do that in a vacuum. They do that with their neighbors. I think it's wrong thinking to assume because there are a lot of governments that there is going to be chaos. There are 77 counties in the state of Oklahoma. Why is there not chaos here? A fundamental respect of authority and the rule of law and jurisdictional boundaries and a willingness to get along. And it really comes down to whether or not the individual governments have a will to cooperate and solve problems through compromise or not. None of this is bright line, one side wins, one side loses. Folks work together. Just like we have municipal and county governments and state and federal governments, there are tribal governments. You drive from Oklahoma City to Dallas, you go through jurisdictions every few minutes along, along the way on the road. It's no different, it's just a different form of government. It's gonna be governed in accord with its own laws, just like a city is, and it's gonna represent a constituency, just like a city or a county or a state does. We deal with it already, the challenge is just working together figuring out the common cause uh, that can pull us together and pull in the same direction, as opposed to focusing on differences or distinctions. On motor fuels, uh, on tobacco, on a variety of other tax issues, the state and tribal governments have sat down, operated within a framework of what the law is, what can and cannot be lawfully done, and figured out how to raise revenue to provide government services that both the tribes and the state can agree to. When state leaders and tribal leaders respect one another, communicate with one another, and can be frank with one another about their challenges, they tend to be able to sit down and, and problem solve. When tribal and state leaders are not communicating effectively and problem solving, it's the taxpayers that end up footing the bill. Tribal sovereignty is not a threat to the state of Oklahoma. Tribal sovereigns are just like any other sovereign. Tribal peoples are like other peoples. They want what's best for their kids, they want what's best for their communities. Here in Oklahoma, that's always been the bedrock on which the intergovernmental cooperation that we've succeeded with has been built on. Because of the tribe's unique relationship with the United States, extra beyond the, the state, which is, as I've said, brings millions and millions of dollars for healthcare, roads and, and bridges, and education to the state of Oklahoma that we would otherwise not enjoy. The benefit to Oklahoma of the tribes being here is evidenced by this economic impact. Tribes have had a long history of partnering with the state. They have a long history of perseverance and patience. They have a sense of a desire to be neighborly and they want to keep their word. And that's really all they expect from those around them. Tribal sovereignty is not contrary to, it's not, it's not adverse to state sovereignty. Tribal sovereignty is an enhancement of the opportunities for Oklahomans. Tribes have been here for millennia. We are woven into the fabric of every community that we're involved in, whether you're talking about law enforcement, about healthcare, education, infrastructure, jobs, charitable giving. We are there and a part of those communities. Tribes are firmly rooted in Oklahoma to be strong partners in the positive government-to-government -government relationships that improve life for all Oklahomans. Oklahoma thrives together.